In this presentation, we're going to go through the basic concepts of correlation and covariance. And that is how it's calculated, how it's related, how uh, we do it in R. So why should we at all bother talking about co covariance or correlation? Well, because most of the systems that we look on in food science is complex biological systems. And when you measure complex biological systems, there will be features going up and down together. So for instance, in this plot, what we see is that we have the intensity and the bitterness of coffee samples. And we see that they follow to some extent a line, a trend line, which called, we say that these two features are correlated. So the learning objectives is to be able to calculate correlation coefficient and covariance, know the relation between the two, and some relevant plots. So the correlation describes the linear relation between two response variables. And here we have the two response variables, bitter and intensity. The correlation is scale independent. That means that it doesn't have any unit and um, has the same interpretation regardless of what we are measuring. It is in the range from minus one to one. And the formula that you have here is the upper one is the covariance and the lower one is what we call the correlation coefficient, where we take the covariance and divide by the standard deviation of the two response variables. So let's go and see how this is done. So here we have here we have two vectors, two response variables, x and y, and we have four observations. So let's just try to make a scatter plot of these with x and y, the two axes here, where we have one point 16, we have 1.15. So have these three, these four points plotted on an x and an y axis. So the formula says that we take the difference between each point and the center, so that is x minus the mean and y i minus the mean and do that for all the points. So first we need to calculate the center of these ones. So the average of x is x bar equals to one plus one is two for 12 divided by four that's three and y bar is, is equal to 16, 17. So let's try to plug in the average. So the average of x is 3, that's here, and the average of y is 17, that's here. So this point is the center of x and center of y. Then the equation says that we take for each element the distance to the center. So that's this distance in x and this distance in y. And we take the product of these which basically means that we have this rectangle. So what we get is four rectangle areas. And we see here that that is the ones that we deal with in order to calculate the covariance. In order to calculate the covariance, we take these areas and we sum them up. So if we write this one out, we will get two minus two times minus one and so forth. So if we sum these areas together, we will see that we will get 2 plus 4 plus 2 plus 3, which equals 11. In addition to summing up these areas, we need to divide by the number of observations that we have, so in this case 4, minus one, and we subtract one because we calculate the center of these two vectors. So if we divide by three, we'll get this number. That tells us that the covariance between x and y is in this case 11 thirds. 
having the co covariance between the two variables, we call that capital S with the subscript XY, we can calculate the correlation coefficient. The correlation coefficient between two variables is the covariance between the two variables divided by the standard deviation of the individual variables. So if we calculate the standard deviation of the two vectors x and y, we'll be able to calculate this number. So for this example, the standard deviation of x is square root 6, and the standard deviation of y is square root 10 over 3. So if we calculate this one, we'll get that the correlation coefficient is 0 0.82. So we see that this number is pretty high, just uh, explaining that the relation between these numbers here are having a high correlation coefficient. A natural way to visualize the correlation between two variables is using a scatter plot. And in order to help the reader, you can chuck in a, a tendency line which shows the relation between the two variables. So a natural question to ask when you look at this is, are there any samples which drive this association? And yes, indeed there are. So in order to, to uh, obtain a high correlation coefficient, you need samples on both ends which drive the association. So the samples in the middle, they do not influence the correlation that much, whereas the samples on the far end of the spectrum on both sides in terms of X and Y, are the ones that will influence the correlation. And if we look at our plot over here, we can see that that's intuitive because the contribution from each plot, from each point, is this area. So the further apart, further away from the center a point is, the larger the area, the more this point contributes to the correlation coefficient. So let's see how this is done in R. So here I have here I have a bunch of data, some coffee samples. There are 192 coffee samples and there's 11 variables. So let's just start by looking a little at the data. So here we will see that we have some design variables, sample, assess, and replicate, and then we have the response variables from column four and forward. If I want to calculate the covariance between any two variables, I can go in and use the command cove, cov, and chug in the two variables that I want to compare. So for instance, sour and bitter, and I can chug enter, and I'll get the covariance. If I change this to correlation, cor, I'll get the correlation coefficient between these two variables. Another neat way is to use the command on a range of the data. So here I would like to see the correlation between all the variables, all the response variables from intensity, column four, up to the ch chocolate, which is column 11. So that'll be this command. And what you'll see is that you will get a diagonal, which is one, because the correlation between a variable and itself is one. And then outside the diagonal, you will have symmetric entities the correlation between intensity and sour is the same as between sour and intensity. So it's very easy to, to, uh, to get these numbers in R. If you want to, if you want to um, visualize more than just two variables versus each other, you can use the package gd all y which have a nice function which is called gdpairs, where you put in your data matrix. In this case, I would like to see some of the response variables plotted. And if I execute this function, I'll get a matrix, just like a matrix of the correlation coefficient, but with all the combination, pairwise combination of plots. So in the diagonal here, I'll have the distribution, the histogram or densitogram of the individual variable, and here I'll have the scatter plots. On the upper diagonal, I will have a metric stating the correlation coefficient. We can make this plot a little nicer by adding on tendency lines. So continuous equals to smooth. If we do this, 
we will get the same plot, but now we have put in the tendency line in all the scatter plots. And there are further ways you can customize this uh, matrix plot um, to serve your purpose. So I hope that this shows you what, how to calculate from a mathematical point of view the co covariance and correlation and how to visualize it and calculate it in R.